Hey everyone, welcome back to an updated bookshelf tour because I haven't done a bookshelf tour in quite some time. Things have changed a bit here and there, so I thought I would give you an updated version of my kind of cozy dark academia vibes bookshelf. But before we continue, I do have a few new books to add to my collection first. The two new books that I'm going to be adding to my collection are from Book of the Month because this video is in collaboration with Book of the Month that I'm always so freaking excited about because if you don't know, Book of the Month is a US-based subscription service for readers and every single month that team goes through dozens of new releases pick their most favorite ones, and those are books that you can choose from every single month. They of course always arrive in this amazing blue box, including a lovely bookmark. So let's take a look at the two books that I chose for this month. I'm already so excited because Christmas is coming up. So of course I wanted to get a Christmas winter vibes book, which means I chose A Winter in New York. It already sounds so cute. It says, a young chef stumbles upon a secret family recipe that might lead her to the love and life she's been looking for. Yes, please. I also went to New York this year, so I'm just like, maybe I'll recognize some things that they're talking about. And the next one I chose, did I choose this because of the cover? Maybe. It's the Kingdom of Sweets and it looks so cool. This gloriously transportive reimagining of the Nutcracker tells the tale of twin sisters divided by envy and magic and set against each other one faithful Christmas Eve. Two festive Christmassy books. I am so freaking excited. So if you've never heard of Book of the Month before, as I said, every month you can choose one of the new releases that they're releasing in a beautiful hardcover. However, they now also have audiobooks. So for some books, you can choose to get either the hardcover or the audiobook if that's what you prefer. They always have free shipping to the US and to Canada, and they also have a loyalty rewards program with lots of nice perks if you've been a member for some time. The best thing about December is that you can now get your first book for only $5 if you use the code SWEATER. So definitely take a look on their website, click the link in my description, and browse the new books for December. I am so excited about these books, and I will of course keep you updated when I'm reading them. But now I need to put them on my shelf and do my bookshelf tour. So thanks again so much Book of the Month for working with me on this video. It always makes my day. So let's go back and take a look at my bookshelf. I'm so excited to show you my updated bookshelf tour. If you haven't seen a video of how I'm making my bookshelf, you can check it out up there because my dad and I built this bookshelf over a year ago and I will link all of the kind of materials that I've used down below because I always get lots of questions of how I built this bookshelf. So it's basically rails on the back on, you know, on my wall and then shelf holders that I can click into the rails and different shelves that I can like put on the holders. So I can change up the height of the shelves very easily. I can just, you know, take the clicking things out and put them back in on the right height and then just put the shelf on there. There are two different shelves on each like long shelf that made up of two shelves. So I will try to link everything down below of the materials that I've used. But I think that in all of these kind of big DIY shops, you know, you can get very similar items to build your own. Okay, so without further ado, let's take a look at my bookshelf. And first I will just quickly do a little overview. And after that, I will go into detail a bit further per shelf and per genre. So I hope you're going to enjoy this video. Please do give it a thumbs up and let's go. What was that? Let's go. <laughs> let's take a look. Okay, I'm just going to be doing this handheld for now, but this is my entire bookshelf. First of all, there is a very lovely reading chair that's my favorite. I will also try to link it down below, but I'm afraid they don't have it anymore, but I will still link the shop down below. So it goes all the way until my ceiling. The first two shelves have fantasy books. Then we have literary fiction, like adult fiction and some magical realism. These are all of my classics. Then we have nonfiction and kind of thriller, historical fiction and mythological retellings. Then we have children's books, Dutch books and some young adult books. And all the way at the bottom, also some middle grade, young adult and some poetry. And at the back, I just have some older books and a little bit of storage. So that's not very interesting. But yeah, this is my entire bookshelf. And now let's take a closer look at each of the shelves. Okay, so this is how I would show you the top two shelves, but like this is not working. I'm even wearing very high heels <laughs> to like try to reach the top two shelves but this is not working. So I'm just gonna show, you, show those to you handheld and then the next shelves, I will just talk to you whilst showing my face. So let's get back to the camera. 
the top two shelves are all fantasy and sci-fi. Young adult fantasy and uh, adult fantasy are all kind of combined because unfortunately they didn't really fit on one shelf because I didn't have enough room like shelf wise and there some of the books are just very tall so I had to kind of mix it up a little bit but that's okay. Up here I have some young adult series, The Wrath and the Dawn, The Viners, The Scythe trilogy, The Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows series, some standalones, there we have an adult book as well as A Game of Thrones which is also an adult book. <laughs> then I have some more fantasy, The Lord of the Rings, The Prayer of the Orange Tree, The Mistborn trilogy as well as the entire a Song of Ice and Fire series, some dystopian, the Extinction Trials and the Hunger Games, and then some more young adult fantasy, the entire Shadow and Bone, the... Ah, I can't remember what they're called, the Infernal Devices, and the Dark Artifices, Artifices, I think, Artifices, and up here, some science fiction young adult, the Lunar Chronicles, oh, I love those series, the... What was it called again? The Illuminate Files? Yes, and then up here some more science fiction. So Andy Weir's books, the... why do I keep forgetting all the names of like <laughs> the series? That's really bad. I can't remember. Those very cute science fiction books, A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet, and then ending up with some of my favorite books, these three, the Sleeping Giants, Waking Gods, and Only Human, I think a Sleeping Giant series, and lastly just a random fantasy book, Babel, because it was a nice big one to kind of end the shelf over there. And on my shelf I also have a few decorations, like a lovely plant here, a lovely plant there, this really cute kind of crystal-ish hanger, and at the back a cute little Prosecco, bottle with some dried flowers and this amazing 30 minute hourglass. How pretty does it look? It's like super super dark blue, it looks kind of black and I love doing reading sprints with this hourglass. The final book on here is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness which is also so freaking good. So this is the first part of my bookshelf. Now let's go over here and I'm gonna put my camera back on my tripod. Okay, we're starting right here, which is where I have part of my kind of adult literary fiction and just some random books here and there, some adventure books as well, but more adult fiction. All the way behind this cute plant, whom I haven't given a name yet, I believe. Let me know if you know a fun name for this plant. I have lots of translated Japanese fiction. So Murakami, Toshigazu Kawaguchi from the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series, which are one of my favorites, these one. Highly recommend. I just saw that there's actually a fourth one out. So now I really want that too. Jumpala here is whereabouts. We're very, very good. And more literary fiction like Hanya Yonigahara books. I still have to read To Paradise and the People in the Trees. I've only read A Little Life. Then we have some more. This is kind of like adventure. <laughs> We did round. I don't know why it's in here, but it's adult fiction, so just leave it here. As well as lots of kind of unhinged female character books right here. Let's just quickly go over there. So we have lots of unhinged female character books by Otessa Moschweg, um, Elif Batuman, Coco Mellos, Eliza Clark, Raven Lailani, Chelsea G. Summers. Lots of these kind of very popular books right now. I'm loving them. A bit further we have some Sally Rooney and lots of more kind of like adult fiction books. Then we have lots of magical realism. All of my The Night Circus books by Erin Morgenson as well as The Starless Sea. I really have to reread The Night Circus because it's one of my favorite books and I haven't reread it in a very very long time. And lastly we have some dark academia books. So My Dog Vanessa, The Secret History, um, if we were villains, bunny, all of these kind of darker books and this is a really cool thing. It's a little house that, I don't know if you can see it, look, you can turn it on and off. Okay, now it's off. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it on. There is a little gnome who lives in here. That's the cutest thing ever. This is handmade by someone called you. It's from Yulch's World. I'll link it down below. So this is my adult fiction shelf. Let's lower a shelf and take a look at all of my classics. Hello, why is this such an awkward angle? <laughs> right here I have lots of my Oscar Wilde books. I love Oscar Wilde. These are basically all the picture of Dorian Gray and then some of his other um, books as well as a complete collection and here are some Shakespeare books. This one and 
I've got more down there. And then just some bigger books that just really fit on my shelf. So Mrs. Dalloway from Virginia Woolf and Around the World in 80 Plants, which is a really cool kind of picture book with all information about plants around the world. Then here I have all of these penguin modern classics, which I love. They just look really cool. And I love all of these um, covers. Very sleek and minimal. This is my favorite from the Modern Classics. Bought this mainly because of the cover and now it's one of my favorite books. So The Outsiders by S.E. Hinton, highly recommend. It's amazing. Okay, I moved a bit to see some more classics. Back here I have Les Miserables that I started in 2016 and still haven't finished, but I will read it one day. More classics like Rebecca, The Handmaid's Still, To Kill a Mockingbird, Peter Pan, all these small little black classics, and George Orwell, Charles Dickens, all of the basic famous classics. And lastly, back here, lots of classics written by female authors, so like Jane Austen, George Eliot, um, okay, not all female authors, but many. Basically all of these pretty ones from Penguin as well. Mary Shelley, more Jane Austen, Charlotte Bronte, um, Sylvia Plath, Virginia Woolf, you know, again, more of the famous classics. This is such an awkward angle to film a bookshelf tour. I'm sorry for the chaos that is my bookshelf tour. Oh, and this one, not written by a female author, but very, very good, The Day of the Triffids. It's a super cool dystopian book, highly recommend it. This was so good. And some other favorites of mine, The Phantom of the Opera and Letters to a Young Poet, also absolutely amazing. Moving on to one of my favorite shelves, which is my non-fiction shelf. I absolutely love reading non-fiction, hence why I have an entire shelf dedicated to it. First of all, we have all of these kind of scientific books. So Women in Science, one of my favorites. It's all about women who are scientists from a long time ago until now, basically. And oh, it's so freaking good. 50 fearless pioneers who changed the world. Then I have Rutger Bregman's De Meeste Mensen Deuge, which is humankind, um, translated very, very good. All of Yuval Noah Harari's books, so the Sapiens series. I've yet to read 21st Lessons for the 21st century, but these ones, so freaking good. Basically, lots of Stephen Hawking books, as well as this one, Neil deGrasse Tyson's Letters from an Astrophysicist. Super, super interesting. And yeah, more science books. I just love reading about science. It's so interesting. Particularly loving this one, even though I haven't finished it yet. It's A Short History of Nearly Everything by Bill Bryson. It's literally a short history of nearly everything. And then there are just many more non-fiction books. Things about people, just humans, how the world works, the comfort book about how there are so many beautiful things in life and like small things to be very happy about. We're gonna move again. That is just so much. Here are some of my favorites just about people and this one for example. How people in Scandinavia kind of get through the very very cold winter and how they embrace the cold and the quiet and the darkness that is winter. Loving this. Or this one, Conversations on Love. All essays and stories about love between lovers, strangers, parents, friends, endings and beginnings. Oh my god, it was so beautiful and so inspiring. Then we also have lots of Patti Smith books. I love Patti Smith. If you haven't read Just Kids, Pick it up right now, oh my goodness. And then I have some more books by very inspiring women. So Simone de Beauvoir, Joan Didion, Mary Beard, just lots of really cool women who wrote books about their lives and inspiring things, which is what I'm digging. And lastly, some more books by women. For example, Dolly Elderton. And I recently read this one, which is Ordinary Wonder Tales. Absolutely amazing. Essays and stories about real life, about Things that are super, super wondrous and amazing and just wonderful. Highly recommend this one too. And back here, I also have some books about feminism and racism, just very important reads. This one was particularly very good, Between the World and Me, written by Tanahisi Coates. This is what it's like being a black person in America and it was absolutely heartbreaking. Okay, I've moved down another shelf, which is where I have all of my historical fiction and just some more general fiction sometimes, some thrillers, basically a little mix and match. Back here I have some mythological retellings. For example, Mythos and The Silence of the Girls, both absolutely amazing. And then I basically have all um, historical fiction, which is one of my favorite genres. As you can see, there are so many. I will get you a bit closer so you can take a closer look. Books like Betty or Simone de Beauvoir's The Woman Destroyed, um, The Book Thief, 
let me see, the Nightingale, Bruta Sapati's books about the Second World War and Burial Rides, The Tattooist of Ice Reach, all such amazing books. But then if we go a bit further, I have more historical fiction, but kind of a whole different vibe, namely books that take place in like the 60s and 70s and sometimes even earlier, lots of books by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which are one of my favorites. I just love Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, all take place in the same universe. And we have Utopia Avenue, which I am dying to read, but I just still haven't picked it up because it's ginormous. The people we keep, absolutely amazing by Alison Larkin, highly recommend. I love these type of books that just take place in kind of the 60s, 70s about people who want to get the most out of life and kind of rebel a little bit sometimes. Then I have a very random, Christmas days books, which I haven't picked up yet. It's all short stories about Christmas. I don't really know what what is doing here, but oh well. And then lastly, I have some kind of thriller books. So Colin Hoover Verity, Tender is the Flesh and Night Film by Marisha Pessel. I don't really have many thriller books, as you can see. So it's just a very small collection. For the last two shelves, I'm just gonna sit here on the floor um, to tell you about them. These are all young adult and middle grade books, as well as some Dutch books. So behind me, I have lots of young adult from years ago. For example, The Hate You Give or like The Fault in Our Stars. Then we have some Dutch books. One of my favorite ones when I was growing up is the Wicked Witch series. This is translated in Dutch and the cover is velvet. Excuse me, it's velvet. They should do this more often. This was amazing. More Dutch books, Heart of Ink, um, a Dutch adult book actually. Art of Japan, and yeah, more Dutch books over here. Down here, some middle grade and some poetry books. The Hard Stopper series, lots of middle grade. It makes me so happy to kind of reread these during the winter times, especially, where are they? The Meth Hague Christmas books. These are so cute. Maybe I will reread them again this Christmas. And I also have a few kind of romance books. I don't really have many romance books. I just have Book Lovers and The Certainty of Chance, as well as Me Before You. So I'm not really the biggest romance reader, but that's okay. And these are all the How Do I Survive series, which is a very famous Dutch kind of middle grade young adult series for girls on how to survive being a teenager and I reread them all recently because a new book has been released and it was just one of my favorite series when I was growing up. And lastly I have a little table here with a fake candle. I have a few fake candles on my bookshelf because of course I'm not gonna put real candles on my bookshelf that's entirely made of wood and paper. But this is my currently reading shelf of books that I'm currently reading or that I really want to read soon. So we have House of Leaves, Middle Game and paper names. And lastly, down here behind my little table, I have got some comics and some graphic novels. Lots of kind of Joker Batman comics, as well as my first ever English book, Creatures of the Night by Neil Gaiman and Michael Zuli, which my grandpa gave to me. It is one of my most special books. So this is my entire bookshelf. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to slowly go through all the shelves just with my camera and some music so you can take a closer look if you want to find out more about which books are on there.
So this is my entire bookshelf. I really hope you liked this video. If you've got any questions on a specific book or just something about my bookshelf, don't forget to just leave them down below in the comments and I can always answer it there. I really hope you like this video. If you want to comment something but you don't know what to comment, comment a candle emoji because I have quite a few fake candles on my bookshelf to make it look more cozy and kind of dark academia-ish. So leave a candle emoji. Thank you again so much for watching. I really hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next video.